Now, one way, when we have fa uh, um, functions like this that sort of are similar, one way to make sure that we're doing the right thing is to define properties. So properties are, of course, ways of checking that our functions do what we expect them to do. But they're also ways of kind of documenting that we understand what the functions do and how they relate to each other. Um, so let's define a quick check property that relates these two cousins. So it's the init function and the last function. So how do these things relate to each other? Init and last. Well, init gives you everything except the last element, and last gives you the last element. So how are those two related? Well, if we start with a list, which is not empty, we take the init followed by the last element, we join those together, we kind of get back to where we started, right? So we can actually write that as a property. I'll call it init last. If we have some list x's, then if we take the initial part of the list and we take the last element and we kind of put the last element we join the last element on the end of the init, we should get back to where we started. So how can we join them together? Well, let's try that. That should be equal to what we started with. We start with a list. We take the initial part and the last part and join them together. How does that look? Then we compile it. No, not right. Oh, and the error message is talking about infinite types, and I don't know what. Can you see what the problem is? Last is not a list. Well done, sir. This guy's not a list. Okay? So you can't use this operator because this operator is for joining two lists. And the last element is not a list. Well, sometimes it is, but not always. So. What about if I use that operator instead? How's that? So what's wrong with it? Someone over here. Why does that go wrong? Does it go wrong? Yeah, another error message. Why can't I put this element on the end of this list? Well, what's the type of that thing? Let's go back and have a look at the type. Oops. What was the type of the colon operator? I need to put it in brackets if I want to ask about its type, because putting it in brackets turns it into a regular function. The first argument, that's the thing you write on the left of it, is a thing, and the second argument is a list of things. So if I try and do this, I've got a thing and a list of things, but they're in the wrong order, the wrong way around. Okay? So that doesn't work, because I have to combine them the other way around. So what if I take that guy and instead put it here? Then the types are correct. The last element is a thing, and the init is a list of things, so we can put this on the front of this. So is this true? No. So I need to find a way of putting this thing on the end of this thing. So what's the trick? That was an interesting point there. Somebody said reverse. Probably could use reverse. Yeah. Yeah, we can make it into a little baby list. We can use this guy if we put this thing in a list. So this is a single element. Now we've turned it into a list a list with one thing in it. Now we can join them together. It's awkward. You might want to think about how you might you could do that maybe with reverse. Yeah. Yes, but that would only be when this is a list of lists. Okay? So if we take the init or the, let me say the last of
there's an example of a list of lists. I take the last element of that list of lists. The last element is a list. But that means the init, if we take that same example, the init will be a list of lists. So in order to put this element on the end of this list, we need to put this element, which is already a list, inside a list. OK, there's the quick check property. Let's check it. Um, let's reload it and hopefully it compiles. Yeah. So how do we do quick check? We, we do quick check. You remember that? Prop in it last. Oh, that didn't work. Um, yeah, that's true. I should test, but but it doesn't matter. My init and init prime, I'm pretty sure they're right. That's not the point, though. Uh, but you'll you'll come back to that. Yeah, we'll we'll test our own functions. But it's nice to actually write properties of the prelude functions too. Um, but this didn't work. Does that mean the prelude functions are wrong? My functions are right. The prelude functions are wrong. No, it's saying. Quick check's just saying, it, I got an error. And if you're writing a property, you shouldn't get an error. Because if you get an error, then something sounds like it's wrong. So I've defined the property incorrectly. And what's incorrect about the property? Why isn't this property always true? Why isn't it always true? Why doesn't it always give you the answer true? Yeah. Yeah, it tells you why. It says uh, empty list. So it doesn't give you true because if you give it an empty list, this gives you an error, and this gives you an error. So they're not equal when the list is empty. So what we meant to say is this is a property that holds whenever this guy is not empty. So we need, to, we need a way of telling quick check that we, we don't want an empty list. Now, there are... A bunch of different ways of doing this, but I'm going to show you one that is fairly simple, and that is to add, to use a quick check operator to filter out the test cases that we're not interested in. The test case we're not interested in is the case when this guy is the empty list. So I want to remove that case. So I'm going to do that by, by using this operator, and it's a quick check operator, and I'm going to say if it's not null, so if this guy is not the empty list, so this is the predicate that tells you whether this is an empty list or not, and I'm saying if it's not the empty list, then this property should hold. Now this looks like a logical implication operator, and that's not an accident. But this is not a Boolean operator. This is a quick check operator. So what's the difference? Well, actually, the type of this thing here is actually no longer a function that gives me a Boolean value. This, when I use this operator, it has a slightly different type. It gives me now a quick check Boolean operator. So it's a quick check bool. It's a kind of like bool with, with benefits, with extras. Um, so it's, it's a bit like, it behaves a bit like a bool, but it only makes sense to quick check. And that's called a property in quick check. So this, the type of this thing is it takes a list of things and gives me a property. So whenever you use one of these guys in, it, on top of a Boolean, you get, it transforms it into a property. So this is just a quick check bit of magic. Um, and it's not quite right. Ah, oh, OK. Um, so I'm going to get back to the type in a minute. So let me leave the type out and let quick check work out the type. Um, so this is not actually the type because I'm using equality here. I need equality on A. So if I want to make this type, you need to be in the EQ gang. If you're in the EQ gang, then this is the type. It's getting a bit complicated. So I'm not going to write down the type 
Well, I have done, but I'm going to comment it out. So ignore the type for now. Haskell can work out the type. And what's more, if we quick check, then everything's good. Or so we think. Let's change this to one of the versions that I had earlier that we know is wrong. That's when we put init on the front using that operator. I comment that bit out. So we know that that's wrong. We can't put the initial element on the front. So let's test it again. It still works. <clears throat> that's a bit weird. Did I really reload the file? Did I really save the file? Yes, I saved the file. We need to look at what's going on. Let's Instead of doing a quick check, let's do a verbose check. Let's see all the random values that quick check is actually using. There you go. So what are these values here? What, what on earth is a blob? One of those. What is it? It's the empty tuple. I promised you you'd see one. What's the type of the empty tuple? The type of the empty tuple is the empty tuple of types. Okay, so this is a type. It's a bit special, this type. It's the simplest Haskell type in the sense that there is only one value that has this type. And that's why it's a pretty useless value, a pretty useless type. I mean, it's completely useless, but it's, it's fairly useless. So it's the type where there's only one value. Um, so why has QuickCheck using that for the values of the things in the list? And what's the consequences of that? Well, if you build a list, if you randomly generate lists containing blobs, then it doesn't matter whether you put the last element on the front or at the end, it's going to look the same, because all elements look the same. They're just blobs, right? So this is true if you choose lists of blobs. And why does it do that? Well, it's a Haskell thing. I used to blame quick check, but it's actually a Haskell thing. Haskell, when you type expressions, it defaults to the simplest type. And the simplest type that you can use here is the blob. If it was numbers, it would choose integer. It considers integer to be the simplest type of number. But if you choose anything you like that has an equality operation, then it chooses blobs. So how can we fix that? Well, we can fix that by one of two ways. We can put the type in and tell it, don't test with any old A but test with what would be a good example of a type to choose. What's the simplest type we could choose which would catch this error? Well, you might choose int, but you could actually just choose bool. If you have mixes of trues and falses in your list, that's enough to catch the case when you do something in the wrong order. So if we test now with our incorrect version, then we see that we get, after three tests, it's found a counterexample. This property fails for the list true-false, two different elements. So let's go back to the correct solution. It's something like that. Let's test it now. And I'm doing verbose tests, so you get to see all the tests. And you can see that it's working. So without this thing here, the test is the property is not correct, but the type would be bool. With this, I'm using a quick check filtering operation to throw away all the test cases where the list is empty. Any questions? Yeah. Yes. Um, there are several ways of fixing it, but I'll show you one of them, which doesn't require us to do anything new. If instead of thinking, it as a, thinking of it as a property of a single list of things, if we think of it as a property of a thing and a list of things, okay? So let's make it a property of any bool and any list of bools. So any x and list of x's. So we have a list and we have a bool. So why am I now doing a property of two things? Well, if I put this thing on the front of the list, I'm guaranteed to have a non-empty list. 
right? So how do I guarantee that X is always, that the list I use in the property is non empty? I take this element and put it on the front of the list. I can do this test instead. I build a non empty list, then the initial element of that non empty list, and the last element of that non empty list. So that's another way of, of doing the same thing. Well, I've given a type declaration. Oh, I see. Um, yes, all right. So that's a way of forcing it to be non empty. So that was a way of not doing this. Okay. Uh, sorry, I misunderstood the question. So the question was not how do we do this without using this guy? Uh, so we'll ignore that. Let's go backwards. Uh, go backwards here. Um, the question was how do we do it without naming the whole type? having to worry about whether it's a bool or a property. And I'll show you a little trick for that that's often used in quick check. So if we didn't write down the type, we can be a bit more lazy. What we can do is we can do the following trip. We can make a local definition of something. It doesn't actually matter what it is. Let's call it types. And we say, well, I'm going to define something. And uh, the only purpose of this something I'm defining is to, to force the type to be the type I want. I'm going to say this type's x's. So type's just going to be x's, but I'm going to add a type to this. I'm going to say this has to be a list of bool. So this is a way of saying, yes, this works for any type, but I'm going to insist that x's is actually a list of bool. I'm adding a little bit of type information inside the program. So this is something you will sometimes see in quick check programs. It saves you having to write the whole type, but at the same time stops Haskell from choosing a stupid type. So that's another little trick. So when, yep. No, no, I could write underscore. So I could write, I don't care what it is, uh, I'm defining something which I don't care what it is, oh, but by the way, it's equal to x's at uh, as, a, as if it was a list of rules. <laughs> so it's just a way of constraining uh, a type. And then it will work in the same way. If I change bool here to int, for example, and rerun that example. So then we're testing it with, with lists of ints. Okay, any questions? <coughs>